signify an agreement to the processing of her personal data Let for the specified purpose. Yes. Can you go to a uh, back slide? Uh, just yeah, this one. Yeah, obligations of data fiduciary. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So. I just want to add uh, two, three points here, if you can allow. I know you are. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. No, please, go please, ahead, go please ahead. feel free. Please. Why not? Go ahead. So, because in, under the, this, this is very crucial, actually, the obligations of data fiduciary are very crucial. Because, uh, and the another part which we are already talking about, the data fiduciaries can use the data processes to, per, to process personal data on their behalf, under a, only under a valid contract. Right. And then another important thing is that data fiduciaries must employ uh, certain suitable technical uh, technical measures. Right. Otherwise, without the use of technology, it will be very difficult to control all this, to comply with this act. So now there is a need to have that uh, technological uh, uh, system or some app in place. Right. Then data fiduciary is also responsible that uh, he has to uh, take care that uh, to how to avoid the data breaches, right? We have talked about the if breaches there, that data fiduciary should notify the board and then also the impacted data principles also, right? That is also uh, under the obligations of data fiduciary. And, uh, and then another important thing is if data principal is withdrawing their consent, right? Then it is a responsibility of the data fiduciary that that uh, their their data is no more longer stored in the organization right 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 these so so these are the points which i just wanted to make in addition yes, to yes. what you have said yes in fact uh, in, in fact Raji, in last you, yeah Raji, in fact more or less what you are saying in our day-to-day -day life if we see today a lot of changes have taken place in digitalization people actually trade in the capital market. People are able to open their DMAT account, they are able to deal themselves. But there are certain elderly people who are not very familiar. What they do is they still do the same thing with the, what you call authorized share broker. When they do the authorized share broker, there is a informal, there's a formal agreement actually in place between the investor and the share broker. And the share broker carries on a lot of things on behalf of the investor by using his personal data, contract, contract obligations, and his share, pledging of the share, selling, buying, crediting, operating, all those things. So here, then definitely the consent is actually given the free consent. I authorize you to operate on my behalf and you can use this, this, this etc. number one. Number two, he does so. If he withdraw the concern, he cannot do. Number two. Number three, the regulator, especially Security Exchange Board of India, has put a lot of restrictions, security, the requirement, and uh, audit, and certification, all those things which are actually in place in order to protect any misuse. So similar things will happen here also as we talk about the free concern, withdrawal of concern, and all those things. The security is to be taken care of fully. Yeah. Yes, and uh, now I coming to the point, your point that under the obligations, one more point is there that uh, data protection officer has to be appointed uh, by the data fiduciary to address the grievances, right? Yeah. Uh, so, and they should have the proper system to maintain it. Correct. Right. So please. Please, so Someone has raised a question. Can a stat meanwhile as a, can a statutory auditor be a data fiduciary? <laughs> Let me think. So why? Yeah, good. We should discuss it. Now, can a secretarial auditor, can an internal auditor, let's not say internal, but can a statutory auditor or a secretarial auditor who are having their own practicing firms, can they be data fiduciary? Let's analyze this. So yes, uh, we come within the definition of person. But then look at the provisions of specified purpose, lawful purpose. What is, uh, and are we processing that information which the client has given to us? For, uh, for what purpose are we using it? And are we digitalizing it? 
uh, you know, all those things, we have to read together all those provisions. So uh, per se, for an audit related purpose as a statutory auditor, so then uh, we are not those that typical data fiduciary as such. We have, we have other responsibilities under other acts like the structural digital database. We are consultants, we are added as consultants, you know, as fiduciaries of information over there to maintain confidentiality. But uh, we are not as statutory or secretarial auditors, we are not processing the digital personal data of an individual for for a for a purpose, so I think purpose is more important. The specified purpose, yeah. So we proceed further. Consent norms, yes. So consent... as a statutory as a statutory auditor, we are a receipt of the company payroll data of a company under audit the same. What? Companies for the person puts as the secretary mm -hmm. auditor, we are receipt of the company payroll data of a company and audit the same. Yeah, for audit uh, for audit purpose. Because again, the same thing comes in that see information is provided to you to carry on the audit and they ensure the compliances which are actually required. Yes. But uh, where is the question of uh, the information is being processed for? You are in for any other purposes. For, yeah, the for the other purposes. You have to audit and give it to them back. Correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But yes, it's a... But, I appreciate people are brainstorming. That's but, the purpose. But the one thing is that yeah. here, it will be maintaining a confidentiality will occur here. Yes. Because he cannot actually part with this data to any outsider under the confidentiality, even under the common law. So as well. And, and not only that, you are not on the company side. Yes, yes. But yes. I, but I must say, but I must say, it's a very interesting and thought-provoking question, actually. Yes, because, yes, because, uh, because if you if you will go strictly by the definition, uh, any employer, if you're getting any personal information, it, he's in the digital world. If he's keeping any personal information, right, of anyone, so it may become a processor. I don't know uh, uh, exactly, but. Uh, it's still uh, thought provoking, and I think uh, yeah, it's appreciate a, it. Good it, 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 it. It's it's require a good research work. You are right, absolutely so right. Is... But one thing is there, we got today. I said in the beginning also, we will not be able to exactly answer certain questions because the rules are yet to be notified. Rules will give more clarification on these things. Yes. But <laughs> once, once yes. the rules are notified, things will right. be more clear. Actually, yes. Uh, one thing more I was. Hmm. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, so, uh, consent norms are very important. Uh, here again, you know, we can look at our existing practices. We all, when we use websites, we uh, the consent is sought for, right? I agree. Uh, you consent, for example, for attending this webinar also, we sought your consent. You checked that that box and entered the webinar. Uh, I register for so many conferences. Uh, I check, I give my consent. I use websites, I give my consent. Uh, cookie permissions. We all are doing it currently, right? Do you agree uh, there'll be the cookies will be placed in your uh, systems if you use this website or our application? Then the necessary cookies and the cookies which are not necessary and accept, decline, all those kind of options come, right? under the Information Technology Act and the rules. Now, we need to take a step further because there have been instances and do have we been really able to protect our personal data having, having those existing uh, steps in place or the these kind of consent mechanisms in place, right? So hence, uh, We'll see once the rules are notified that what are those, the manner in which this consent will be sought and what are those other uh, critical functionalities. But yes, the requirement is this, how the consent has to be taken. Besides being free, specific, et cetera, et cetera, it has to signify an agreement to the processing of personal data 
and that too for the specified purpose and be limited to such personal data as is necessary. One illustration here, uh, I have to mention it, uh, none other but this one that, and you'll also see, I mean, all kudos to, the, to our uh, legislature, the drafters of this act, because practically also what we see that when we um, uh, download an app or um, we make use of an application, so uh, it's very common, you all would have noticed that they ask us to give consent for accessing our contacts. And I had always wondered that why, I mean, my all contacts, I'm sharing my contacts list with this particular app, where is it going and what is the need for this particular purpose? So a very nice illustration, I'll have to flip through pages where this section is, but yeah, section six. So. So a very good illustration has been given on this third point that be limited to such personal data. So if you are uh, downloading a telemedicine app and there you are requested to consent for processing of your personal data and also for accessing your mobile phone contact list and because you urgently need to have that app, you check on both, you give your consent on both, but then the consent will be limited only to the processing of your personal data for making available the telemedicine services. Since the contact list, your entire contact list is not necessary for buying telemedicine services from that app. Yeah, so, so, so these aspects will now be taken care of. Then any part of consent constituting an infringement of the provisions of this act or any other law shall be invalid to the extent of such infringement. Request for consent shall be in a clear and plain language with option to access it in English or any other language specified in a schedule to the constitution. And you have to provide the contact details of a data protection officer or any other person authorized by the data fiduciary to respond to any communication from the data principal. Marudur, somebody has actually put up here. Yeah. Statutory auditor is not given the personal data, but only the entity data. That means he is talking about that uh, payroll audit. The same think. thing, yes. yes. Same Someone thing. is trying to. Yeah, yeah yes, then, this is all. Yes. And then uh, another thing is there. Can a person wear the two hats simultaneously? One as a statutory auditor, and the second one, data fiduciary, data processor. Can he act as a statutory auditor when he acts as a data fiduciary data processor? Uh, yes, wait, wait. So um, uh, uh, let's deliberate. On the first thing, it's not only the entity data. You are also sharing information with the auditor about your directors, about your shareholders. Now think about the list of directors and list of shareholders. Do they not contain their uh, addresses? their email IDs, this is personal data. So it's not about that, right? But it's more about the purpose as we have already discussed. That as an auditor, what is the purpose of taking that information, conducting audit? You're not processing it. Yeah, so, so look at the definition of specified purpose. The purpose is more important here. And secondly, yes, why there should be an embargo? You, uh, if I am a statutory auditor, so, so here you will have to look whether under the Companies Act as a statutory auditor, what are the activities you are restricted to Correct. undertake? That is the exact point. If you <laughs> yeah. actually obtain the practicing statutory auditor, can yeah. you actually involve getting doing other things? Other can things. Can you practice two professions? These are yes. all the things will come into picture. Not only that, it will also come under the company secretary, sorry, Chartered Accountancy Chartered Act account. itself. Act itself. Yeah. And so the standards. The, and yeah. the standards. So, so, but good. Whosoever has raised this point, because ultimately our participants are from the CACS law fraternity. Correct, correct, correct. This applies yes. to all of us. We yeah. are... Members it, of it, it is not only the data privacy act, it is also, you know, running through the company side, it is also running through the respective data. institutions act, all yes. has to be read together conjectively and then you have to take a call. Yes. And let me tell you, if you will read this act carefully now, the DPDPA, 
it actually encourages you or rather mandates you to ensure compliance with all other laws applicable. It's not only about compliance correct, under this correct. act. We'll see. It and says more, you have to comply with all other acts. One more thing has come. Hmm. Madam, nowadays what is actually happening in the organization steal the data from MCA. I don't know what he means because nobody can steal the data of MCA unless you take a authorized inspection and ask for it, etc. and all. I do not know what he means actually. And to provide the provide this to some marketing companies of an organization, anyhow, for whom such data is actually beneficial without the permission of the director of the company under the ambit of the protection of if so, what are the what are the classes? So wait, we are not talking about data. But I don't think we will be able yeah, to answer we this. We are not taking this. Up. Because uh, it is all, you know. This simply, is unethical. Yeah. See, this is simply unethical. Let's maintain the yeah, sanctity. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yes, it's let's not discuss any unethical. Right. Yeah. Many things happen, but yeah. we are not having this presentation for hackers and data yeah. Yeah. Uh, snatchers right. Right. and uh, yeah. you know, those kind of things. Yeah. yeah. So but, these are uh, the consent now. Yes. I am having a different view over the two hats which you are statutory auditor, right? Although, hmm. because as uh, this act is not prohibiting or saying that it's a new uh, thing which the statutory auditor is doing, actually statutory auditor or might be company secretary and professional, if as a, as a, as a firm has seen, processing certain data, personal data, then he might have to wear the two hats and he might be or have certain obligation under this act. Right, irrespective, uh, uh, because it's not two different professions. In the same profession, if he is into the getting certain processing certain personal data, then of course he will be considered data fiduciary as for under this act. So that's my point of view. I I, I might be wrong also, but that's my no, point no. of view. Here. It's okay, Rajiv ji. Yes, but if they are not falling, if such parallel activity is not falling within the restrictive set of activities under as we discussed, you know, so, so, so this that, is that, a sensitive. That, that, yes, that is so okay. then yes. Yeah, we'll have to see. Hmm. There is high stringency and accountability for professionals like statutory auditors, chartered accountants, company secretaries. We have... Uh, we are bound by regulations of our armor matter, yeah. But aside that, if any activity is allowed, you're right. We could be data fiduciaries or data processes. But I don't know how. Somebody is actually put up. Ravi Kumar has actually put up. Company secretary in five days, and the PCA, including auditors, come under the ambit. Yeah, they come as we had been discussing. If they are taking up any activity which is not restricted under the current set of regulations applicable to them, whether it's company act or the regulations prescribed by our inst respective institutes. Yes? Somebody has actually given the clarification, the provision regarding the restriction on professional services under the ICAI regulation prohibit the statutory auditor in engaging any other consultative roles. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Chalo, let's proceed okay. further. Okay. So, withdrawal of consent is, is a great... Uh, great aspect. Uh, the data principal has the right to withdraw her consent at any time with the ease of doing so being comparable to the ease with which such consent was given. And the obligation is on the data fiduciary to provide such right to withdraw consent. On withdrawal of consent, the data fiduciary shall seize and cause the data processors to cease processing the personal data unless such processing without her consent is required under the provisions of this act or any other law in force in India, that is to meet any legal obligation. Another very important aspect and uh, Rajiv ji, I think again, we should maybe uh, appreciate some insights from your side here. The uh, requirement for a consent manager, this, has be, this is being deliberated upon what the act uh, DPTPA says here is that the data principal may give, manage, review, or withdraw her consent to the data fiduciary through a consent manager. The consent manager shall be accountable to the data principal and shall act on her behalf. 
every consent manager shall be registered with the data protection board right and the consent manager to act as a SPOC, single point of contact, to enable a data principal to give manage review withdraw consent. How? Through an accessible, transparent, and interoperable platform. Now, why people are discussing too much uh, about this requirement? Because yet uh, uh, the manner and obligations of a consent manager, manner of appointment, the technical, operational, financial, other conditions are yet to be prescribed under the rules. Yes, but he will actually act as a bridge between the data principle and data federation. So because he will be the, although he might be appointed by the data fiduciary, but he will act as a bridge. Because it, it as we have rightly mentioned previously, that the, how uh, uh, the, the data principle is having the right to data arrays and uh, to withdraw their consent. So mm -hmm. it, it we have rightly mentioned that uh, he he should have the one person who can he can approach and that is a consent manager and uh, of course that that's a, their duty to uh, help the data principal. I agree. A consent manager will in fact uh, will in fact uh, lead to ease of compliance. Right. Uh, right. Yes, and I coming from the fintech. Uh, uh, I'm aware how account aggregators are primarily being looked up to meet these requirements because if you talk about this bridge, then account aggregators take up that role in the finance sector because they would be the custodians, they would be that bridge who would be the conduit for accessing the all your you know that financial information uh you consent to provide to them so account aggregators already have that kind of they meet these requirements when we say accessible transparent and interoperable platform they do that yeah and their platforms are interoperable they as a conduit they take information they maintain it they, they protect it and they would certainly be the be the most critical entities in the times to come to ensure compliances under the DPDPA, safeguard the privacy of your information, and to promote ease uh, and reduce paperwork, they would be uh, transferring that information wherever it will be required, but subject to meeting the standards prescribed under DPDPA. So let's wait for the rules to provide more clarity over here. Well, if somebody has raised the question, if yeah. contracts carry a class, the data will be used to train AI models and or give responses by a generative AI tool and the user has already given a consent. Now if the consent is actually withdrawn, what is the obligation on the data already used and maybe even transformed? Yeah, so it's relevant question. Uh, there is a provision uh, in the act. We'll look at uh, the slides further. Okay. Yeah, because okay. the right to withdrawal is a very important right. However, and, and the act itself says that the, uh, that the consent can be withdrawn at any time. Now, what if like in this particular case, the, the processing has already happened and the, 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 the processor would have incurred cost right would have would have in turn uh, tied up with other intermediaries or business partners to use that data to produce some generative ai and have some end uses but but since the right of withdrawal is there uh, the data principal withdraws the right but before the withdrawal whatever processing has already happened that the legality of that cannot be questioned and if there are any adverse consequences so then those consequences, the, the, the withdrawal or the, the, the data principle will be responsible for those consequences. And the act provides for that. Take it. Yeah, he yes. says that whatever is stored has to be deleted or erased when concern is withdrawn. That is the one. Deleted. Thing. Deleted. Yeah. Erased. Only condition is if it is required for legal lawful purposes. So. Mm -hmm. Whether information can be retained permanently by an online agency after the consent is withdrawn, can the agency use the data? No, the the main uh, the main purpose of the act is to not allow storing any personal data. 
it has to be erased it has once the purpose is over we'll see in further slides yeah so it is okay. only for the intended purpose the specified purpose and once the purpose is over or even before that if the consent is withdrawn the data has to be erased you are not permitted to store data in any scenario otherwise except those restrictions in place to having data servers backups in india and all read everything together yeah move forward yeah so then uh, the next obligation of data fiduciary is to issue a privacy notice now privacy notice before we embark upon the requirements of a privacy notice please differentiate it from your general privacy statements i had talked about it previously privacy statements that we see while we use websites do electronic transactions this under dpdpa it has to be a specific privacy notice every request for consent shall be accompanied or preceded by a notice given by the data fiduciary to the data principal informing about the personal data and the purpose for which the same is proposed to be processed then the manner in which she may exercise her rights under this act and the manner in which the data principal may make a complaint to the data protection board now it also covers scenario where uh, any one of us could have given a consent before the commencement of this act that is before 11th august 2023 then what will the data fiduciary do he shall give the notice to the data principal as soon as it is reasonably practicable now in last 6 months have we given any uh, such notices we are waiting for the rules to uh, tell us more about the manner of issuing notice these notices data fiduciary may continue and hence we are continuing to process the personal data until and unless the data principal withdraws her consent but i'm sure uh, organizations uh, are much aware and when we talk about the preparedness uh, the this data might have been erased because it is no longer uh, required for the specified purpose so, so then one question has come actually so it is very important actually for the for the organizations to have first the process in place of data discovery what exactly data is kept by the organizations so that that a part is very important and i think this is a before the rules are being notified it is important for the organizations or the company secretaries to advise or legal professionals to advise that we should have a system in place where the uh, we have kept the personal data which in server whether they are actually in the cloud mode or whether we have kept in indian servers or outside uh, servers where the data has been kept and which data is actually been utilized now because uh, although we say data is uh, uh, big fuel and uh, we compare with oil but it is now have the negative impacts also on the same time right if we, because we keeping excess data that is also creating the problems and that's why it will be managing the after the rules are notified the managing the privacy notice taking consents uh, without technology i think it will be very difficult yeah sure somebody put up a question here with the dpta act already in force in 2023 but the rules are yet to be notified will any illegal act done till the rules come into place be enforceable lawful purpose lawful purpose is defined under the act if you yourself are using the word illegal some some illegal activity how how can it be enforceable see it lawful, will not be lawful purposes it will be fine anything which happens illegally or unlawful lawful or, purpose anything which is not yeah. forbidden under the law of the land whether, whether is rule different. is there whether rule is not there this all okay. will be enforceable yeah. yes yes will be enforceable and uh, yes rajiv ji has raised a, a very very uh, important significant uh, issue until and unless rules are coming and you know so privacy notice can yeah, yeah, all of this will happen but see rules badness, are all rules are all going rules are all going to talk about the procedural aspects yeah if the law is already come the law is already there yes. the rules are only going to talk about 
how to go about it, what is the thing, what is the procedure, what are the things, that is what the rule is going to talk about it. If the law is already in force, if anything done against the law, it is definitely punishable under the law. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, Fia says this is all about our preparedness. And what are, so currently organizations that are impacted by these provisions that are processing uh, these uh, data, especially banks, you know, wherever there is greater intervention, greater amount of the volume, the nature of business is such where the personal data is being processed day in, day out, they're already into this. And this is all about the, I'm repeating, preparedness. So even if the procedure is yet to be informed, but we are not supposed to or allowed to undertake any activity which is forbidden under the law. And the act is already there. We move further. There are legitimate uses allowed under the act for which uh, the, the consent is not required to be taken. And it could be for the specified purpose for which the data principal has voluntarily provided her personal data and without indicating that she does not contend to its use. And mostly for the state or the state agencies, uh, this, this provision is there. However, if you will read each of these points, you will see the, even if the state and state agencies, they have been given a certain leeway, However, it is for the benefit of citizens only and performance for legal obligations, legal functions of the state. And still they are subject to meet certain standards, which, which should be appreciated. It's not a free uh, uh, allowance to just because it happens to be a government department or a state agency. So let's see if for the benefit, if they are providing or issuing any subsidies, benefits, licenses or permits, where the data principal has previously consented to processing of a personal data, or the personal data is already available in any database, register, or other document maintained by the government, but it's subject to standards these agencies will follow for processing in accordance with the central government policy or any data protection law prevalent in the country. Currently, we have DPD. Then for uh, performance of any fun uh, functions uh, under any law in force or in the interest of sovereignty, integrity of India or security of the state or for fulfilling any legal obligations. Yeah. Then further legitimate uses for compliance with any judgment, decree, order under any law in force in India or even for uh, judgment order relating to claims of a contractual civil nature under any law in force outside India for responding to medical emergencies to provide medical treatment or health services during an epidemic uh, or if there is a threat to public health and for taking measures to ensure safety and provide services to an individual during a disaster. So disaster word is taken from the Disaster Management Act, how we understand this word there. And Rajiv, you earlier mentioned about this when we were discussing about the contractual obligations, any information which, uh, which we as employees, we provide to our employer for employment purposes during our interviews or uh, at the time of our joining. So here also, again, these consent norms do not apply. Or if we are safeguarding the employer from loss or liability, such as prevention of corporate spanage, maintenance of IPR, trade secrets, classified information, or uh, if the employer is taking this information to provide any service or benefit which is sought by the employee herself. Yeah, so so these kind of uh, uses, they are legitimate uses. Somebody in, put fact, up a in, in fact, certain yeah. exemptions are also there regarding the, to if we, if we uh, to determine the financial standing of the loan defaulter. And, uh, and in fact, uh, in case of merger acquisition, if it is approved, already approved, certain yeah. exemptions are there also. They are there. They are exemptions. So here we are talking about these legitimate uses. There is one question has come actually. Yeah. Can the data fiduciary and the data processor same? Can the what? I didn't get it. Whether the data fiduciary and the data processor be the same? No, no, no. 
you how can they be same you have to uh, go by they... the definition because what is the yes. definition says definition says if you read the definition in the i it very clearly says data fiduciary means the persons either he himself or in conjunction uh, with us determines uh, the purpose of and means of processing the processor is actually the one who is actually going to process no wait uh, so it's a relevant question it's a relevant question i get it yeah. yes to an extent mm -hmm. uh and a person an entity could be a data fiduciary also and a data processor also mm -hmm. right we can yeah you if you want to understand it that means however you will have to classify them accordingly because here the loophole is going to arise to skip meeting the compliances and obligations under the act an entity might say i'm both i choose to be a data processor i am not the data fiduciary then who is the data fiduciary right so as professor bala is also saying we'll have to carefully analyze the difference looking at the definitions of these two terms and fix responsibilities if if an entity is meeting both the criteria but then there is no other data fiduciary who is going to meet the obligations right so we In can that look case, at that this. that will be treated as a data fiduciary only data fiduciary only yes yes this is going to happen this is happening yeah In data processor actually is companies, uh, it's happening they are both they are falling in both categories and data processor extent. actually data processor actually is the person who works as an agent or on behalf of the data fiduciary for processing certain data for example uh, in an organization there is so much of employment data is there and we are having the third party right for payroll management then that payroll management company will be treated as a data processor yeah. and for their own employees they will be data fiduciary as, as well as uh, data processor data processors yeah but to fix responsibility and obligations, this classification has to be arrived at very, very pragmatically. Yeah. Somebody has actually put up hmm. one unit of the company can be a fiduciary, another unit can be a processor within the same company. Yes, that's possible. That is possible. 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 Yeah. That is possible. Possible. Yeah. Captive, captive units yeah. might be possible, no? Yeah. Yes. So, so the act does not discourage or restricts your business arrangements. You are free to undertake your business in a manner which is cost effective for you. Right. However, the only condition is that you are meeting the obligations and compliances and the personal data of your consumer or customer is not compromised. That's the idea. So now uh, we look at some general obligations of data fiduciary. The first one is very important. The data fiduciary is responsible for complying with the provisions you know, of this. Uh, Murdum, yes. If I can think of, you know, hmm. talking about this uh, data fiduciary and uh, the data processor, etc. I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Suppose hmm. you take a software company. A yeah, software company, they are actually using the third party analytics platform. Then let us say you track the behavior of a particular application. Then, in which case, the, soft, the software company can be called as a data fiduciary. The user is actually a data principal. The analytics who is actually processing the data can be called as a data processor. Is that correct? Yes, 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 correct. Yeah, that is and the there way are many such. Yeah, and this data a... processor could be in India or even outside India who is doing yeah. the profiling of Indian citizens. Correct. It could be. Yeah, that is what you said actually time again. One has to actually apply and analyze and determine correctly. Yes. That is the thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. So, ultimate compliance, the ultimate responsibility for to me to comply with the provisions of this act either for the processing undertaken by data fiduciary itself or on its behalf by a data processor is on the data fiduciary. And this is irrespective of any agreement to the contrary 
or the failure of a data principal to carry out the duties provided under this act. Right? So, so the whole and sole responsibility is of the data fiduciary. Even if you do some agreement with your data processor, still. And hence, as we had earlier discussed, it's very important to draft your uh, the obligations clause under your uh, agreements uh, with your business partners. Right. And then to appoint, use, or otherwise involve a data processor only under a valid contract to ensure the completeness, accuracy, and consistency of personal data to take reasonable security safeguards. Now here, again, the act DPDPA does not uh, specify the what are those security safeguards to prevent personal data breaches. You will have to refer uh, to the existing acts like the, the, the Information Technology Act, the Digital India Act is going to specify the details, how to ensure security safeguards, what kind of incident reporting to be done, certain is going to stay, and then uh, your sector specific regulations. They also mention uh, the security safeguards to be ensured. And then to intimate the personal data breaches to the affected data principal and the data protection board to erase so here, uh, someone raised the question, can we store data? See, there is an obligation. You have to erase personal data when it is no longer needed for the specified purpose or upon withdrawal of consent. You cannot store. And to have in place a grievance uh, redressal system and an officer to respond to queries <coughs> from database. The children, processing of personal data of children A data fiduciary will obtain a verifiable consent of the parent or the lawful guardian before processing any personal data of a child or a person with disability. In no scenario, it can undertake the processing of personal data that is likely to cause any detrimental effect on the well-being of a child. And also you cannot track or do a behavioral monitoring of children or targeted advertising directed at children. Online gaming, uh, our children nowadays, uh, uh, you know, they are so much into online gaming and to an extent I feel it, 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 it uh, it's, it's a good pastime, if not excessive. There is an exemption. The central government may notify the age above which a data fiduciary shall be exempt from applicability of these obligations if it is satisfied that the data fiduciary has ensured its processing of personal data of children in a very feasibly safe manner. So again, how you ensure it, that very feasibly safe manner, then of course you, uh, you, you need not, uh, uh, your activity need not be restricted to such a large extent. Uh, that's the purpose. Then in case of a significant data fiduciary, to ensure higher degree of data protection, there are certain additional obligations. Like a significant data fiduciary will appoint a data protection officer, appoint an independent data auditor to carry out the data audit, and undertake other measures like a periodic data protection impact assessment, periodic audit, and any other measure might also be prescribed in the times to come. Now, who can be a data protection officer? The DPO has to be based in India. Will be an individual responsible to the board of directors or a similar governing body. And will be the point of contact for grievance redressal mechanism under the provisions of this act. After the obligation... Before... Uh, before yeah. we go before we go further we are uh, recently discussed about data breach and data protection mm -hmm. right so here i just want to uh, uh, say that the ai can be a very useful tool actually to gauge the uh, what vulnerabilities are there in the system right if it is used correctly so that that aspect is uh, uh, now coming up uh, very fast and uh, actually ai can also uh, uh, has uh, the capabilities to allow developers to be have a more secure codes in the real time 
right uh, another thing which is uh, also important in especially in case of the challenges in the data breaches uh, i i hope uh, everybody is aware of now of the quantum quantum computing right uh, where the incredible speed makes the quantum computers actually a potential threat to the online security right so we have a threat from all our passwords are encrypted our data is have been encrypted uh, by the organizations right but there's a the threat uh, just imagine the quantum computers actually uh, uh, is not working on the uh, on the zero or one like system it is the new concept which is so fast at it and it is working on the byte uh, two bits and it is so fast uh, that uh, if if anything which previously were taking a uh, seven years to break a password now it is only a seven hours will take up to break that password that's the that is the that speed is amazing actually mm -hmm. right uh, the, uh, and but uh, uh, so uh, it is very important now what we can do that is because uh, quantum com uh, quantum computing employing quantum computing in a system is a very 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 uh, costly affair now if the organization has to think more about the data protection then the technology has to come up for the organizations so i think there is a need to uh, take the assistance of the third party here who can actually uh, having this technique so for data uh, uh, to prevent this data breaches true yeah mutul we are at 1253 yeah yeah yes so let's uh, just yeah, quickly yeah. Yeah, yeah, go for it. we have we have uh, rights now yes. for the data principle there are four category of rights right uh, to information about the personal data being processed the processing activities and uh, the also to have the identities of all the data fiduciaries and data processors with whom uh, her data is being shared the exception is uh, that if the sharing of personal data uh, is for uh, legal purposes authorized by law so then uh, the information need not be provided to the data principal then there is this right to correction completion updating and erasure of personal data right to withdraw consent uh, unless the retention is necessary for legal purposes then we have a right to nominate a person uh, to exercise her rights in case of death or incapacity of the data principal and right to grievance redressal. The, the, the grievance redressal system has to be provided by the data fiduciary or the consent manager. It could be either of this. So the role of consent manager is very important. And for enforcing these rights, an affected data principal has to approach the data fiduciary in the first instance. In case she is not satisfied, she can complain to the Data Protection Board. Now, rights have corresponding duties. The several duties of data principal are uh, to comply with all applicable laws for the time being in force. I told this. And then to not impersonate, impersonate as another person while providing her personal data, to not suppress any material information, to not register a fal false or frivolous grievance or complaint, to furnish only such information as is verifiably authentic. Now, these five set of duties are prescribed under one section, and then there is section six, subsection five, where uh, someone raised this question, I had clarified, that the duty to bear consequences of consent withdrawal. Uh, this duty is on the data principal, and such withdrawal shall not affect the legality of processing of personal data based on consent before its withdrawal. Right, we discussed, and if uh, the the data principal fails to comply with these duties, there is a penalty of INR ten thousand up to INR ten thousand. So, Rajiv ji, you had mentioned about exemptions. So, yeah, while there are legitimate, also, yeah, also the exemption you are discussing here. Yeah. Mm. So, legitimate users are one thing, and then there are several exemptions. See, law as as I told you at the very start very few it's less restrictive and promotes ease of compliance so look at the kind of exemptions there are certain exemptions in part and certain exemptions in full so like uh, all these obligations of data fiduciary that we just looked at 
and then rights and duties of data principal, restrictions on data processing outside India, they do not apply in all these categories, like to enforce legal rights and claims, judicial regulatory functions for prosecution of offenses. And uh, this very important aspect applicable to the BPOs, the, the business, the outsourcing, uh, uh, the companies which are uh, following the outsourcing model, uh, where they have contracts uh, uh, with the foreign entities, the data is being processed uh, processed by these BPOs in India, uh, but the personal data is of an, of non residents under a foreign contract. So these are all exempt. And for a scheme of uh, your M and As and your amalgamations demergers, which is approved by a court or tribunal. So please distinguish between any. Uh, data which uh, which 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 might be shared during the due diligence stage that will not be exempt however if once your scheme gets approved by a court or tribunal so in those cases again you need not for any data sharing and all those things uh, the obligations are not applicable and then yes these loan uh, loan defaulters uh, this falls uh, within the ambit of ibc uh, to ascertain the financial information and location of the loan defaulters. Then some more uh, partial exemptions. Uh, no, before that, as we looked at the first one, so the entire set of obligations of data fiduciary, there is an exemption here. Uh, no, the exemption is there from all the obligations, however, the ultimate responsibility we, we saw, the ultimate responsibility to ensure compliance under this act uh, and to take reasonable security safeguards to prevent data breaches. There is no exemption for these two, even if it is required to enforce legal rights and claims. These two obligations cannot be compromised in any scenario because then uh, the data is compromised. Your personal data is compromised. Some more exemptions to startups and uh, other categories of data fiduciaries that might be notified by the central government. Uh, important ones like the privacy notice, uh, obligation to erase personal data, the all the additional obligations of a significant data fiduciary, all of these uh, need not apply to the notified categories and startups. Then to state agencies, uh, again, the obligations to erase personal data because it might be important for the government departments or authorities to maintain or retain uh, the kind of data, personal data. And then uh, any class of data fiduciary, it could be any class for the, there is a pooling off period of first five years from the date of commencement of this act. They could be exempt from any provision of this act and for such period, as may be specified in the notification. Then in two specific cases, uh, these uh, entities are exempt from all provisions under the act. So any instrumentality of the state notified by the central government, which is in the interest of sovereignty and integrity of India, security of state, friendly relations with foreign states, maintenance of public order, or preventing incitement to any cognizable offense relating to any of these, and the processing by the central government. So both by the processing by the state agencies, and if these state agencies further provide data for these purposes to the central government, then also the central government. And the research <clears throat> organizations or organizations that are archiving uh, offer statistical purposes, However, if the personal data is not, not used to take any decision specific to a data principle, this is an important uh, criteria. And uh, such processing is carried on in accordance with the prescribed standards. So for research and statistical organizations, the standards will be prescribed under the rules. Now, what is the regulatory structure? Let's have a look. Uh, the central government shall establish the Data Protection Board of India. Now, is it a regulatory entity? Let's see. DPP shall function as an independent body corporate and as a digital office as far as practicable and adopt the prescribed techno-legal measures. So practitioners be prepared for some techno-legal measures. 
and how you will make representations before the Data Protection Board. It has a limited mandate to ensure remedial actions against data breaches, to conduct inquiries and issue penalties for non-compliance. Data Protection Board can also uh, undertake mediation if it, it is of the opinion that the complaint may be resolved by mediation and the dispute can be resolved by such mediator as the parties may mutually agree upon or as provided for any law enforcement in India. And we are aware where uh, under the, the arbitration mediation rules, there are certain uh, acts where uh, the mediation practices are currently enforced. Appeal against the decisions made by the Data Protection Board may be filed before TETS Act within 60 days. This is under the provisions of the Telecom Regulatory and Authority of India Act. The appeal has to be disposed within six months. And if not, the reasons for delay have to be recorded in writing. And the provisions of Section 18 of the Tri Act will have to be followed for filing appeals uh, which provides for further appeal to Supreme Court of India. So here you can see the structure for appeals and the process to be followed. Civil courts are barred to entertain any suit of proceeding uh, in respect of any matter for which the Data Protection Board is empowered and even no injunctions can be granted by any court. A comparative analysis where you can understand that what kind of uh, intimations or complaints can be made to the Data Protection Board of India and what are the powers to be exercised by the Data Protection Board. So it, a lot of flexibility has been given here. The, com the intimation of a personal data breach can come from a data fiduciary or the complaint can be made by a data principal. Uh, in respect of a personal data breach, even in case of a breach by a consent manager. Uh, in all these cases, uh, Data Protection Board is entitled to receive the complaint inquire, And what it can do is it can direct any urgent remedial measures to be undertaken by the data fiduciary uh, to conduct inquiry and impose penalty. And Data Protection Board will have powers of the civil court. Now, what is the accountability for data breaches? Uh, we can look at the definition of personal data breach. Any unauthorized processing of personal data or even accidental disclosure cannot be an excuse. If as a, a by chance or by accident, there is a, a disclosure, uh, sharing use alteration or loss of access to personal data that compromises the confidentiality integrity or availability of personal data will all constitute personal data breach. There are financial penalties under the act, penalties up to INR 250 crores. No criminal liability is envisaged. And of course, penalties will be imposed only after uh, conducting inquiry by the data protection board. Yes, there is a, a mechanism to provide voluntary undertakings. So data fiduciaries, can uh, enter into some kind of a voluntary undertaking with the data protection board as a form of settlement of any complaints against them and not incur any uh, penalties. Uh, there is a novel provision under section 37 where the central government may even block the public's access to any information that enables a data fiduciary to provide goods or services in India and this blocking has to be based on two criteria. One, that the Data Protection Board has imposed penalties against such data fiduciaries on two or more prior occasions. And Data Protection Board has recommended a blockage. And in case of false or frivolous complaints, the Data Protection Board may issue a warning or impose cost on the complainant. So even the complainant's uh, data principles need to be careful. Finally, once the rules are notified, the act is ultimately in operation. Uh, these amendments will be done in other acts. Uh, the regulatory structure involves try. So the provisions will be incorporated for appellate tribunal under the DPDPA. Uh, 
then this uh, section 43a this is primarily about those uh, rules relating to the sensitive personal data those will be omitted will be repealed because under dpdpa there is no distinction between personal data sensitive personal data and right to information act uh, right to information act there is a list of exemptions where a citizen need not be provided the information under certain circumstances so in the personal data of an indian uh, citizen individual will be added to that list of exemptions and yes uh, rules rules are yet to be notified uh, we can uh, have them any time and uh, have more clarity about all these provisions that we have looked at so with this yeah, there is one thing which is actually come. It is important to do that even of a death of a person, a death of the principal, the legal hive has the right to withdraw the consent for directing the data per, uh, pertaining to the deceased. It implies that the fiduciary has no permanent right to hold the data of the deceased. Right. That's right. That is right. Understand. Absolutely right, actually. Yeah. Yes. I think with that, the questions we have come to the end of the session, actually. But I can see there are a couple of people who have raised their hand. One is, I think, Subramaniam Sridharan. And second is, actually, Suchi Agrawal. There is Anjali. I think, uh, can we hear from them? If the IT person can enable them to unmute them, we can hear from them. Yeah. Yes, Subramaniam. Can you speak? Anyone out of these three? Subramaniam, Suchi Agarwal, Anjali? They have to unmute themselves first. Yeah. Good afternoon, Atul. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam, you can speak now. Even uh, Suchi, you can also speak if you are available. Unmute yourself first. Anjali, you can also speak. You have to unmute yourself first. So they have removed the hand. I okay. think Anjali has withdrawn the hand. Only two are remaining. Yeah. Yeah. You are there, Subramaniam and Suchi? No, sir. No, I, I don't think so, sir. I think we can. I don't <laughs> think so. That's it. Madhul, you have done a very, very excellent uh, presentation. You have nicely explained, especially the new act, which is altogether the new topic to us. In fact, uh, your presentation provoked a lot of, you know, thinking process regarding, especially the statutory auditor, can the people can wear the two caps, what happens, and all those things. It's very nice. In fact, you have brought the new rule acts. Rules are still awaiting. Whatever presentation you have definitely, definitely made, Rajiv, especially to you, your inputs was very valuable at the appropriate places. We heard you. I am really enriched on a continuous learning experience. It's a definitely, definitely very good job. I heartily congratulate Murdun for the wonderful presentation. Atul, yes, of course. <clears throat> yeah. Atul, yeah, your, your last word, please. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No, thank you, uh, panelists, and uh, uh, special thanks to our uh, guest today. And Maridul, you know, you have done, uh, I could not join the first half, but I was there for the last uh, 30 minutes. But uh, very insightful uh, uh, presentation. And yeah, we can have uh, some more uh, presentation once we have a rule in place. So I think, you know, rule is yet to be notified and all. If you will allow me, I will have the... Yeah, uh, please, please. Yeah, please conclude. Having us very, very briefly closing remarks, I know time is up, right? Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, I, I will also, I will, I, I am a, I'm a poet, poet by heart. So I will also narrate one small <laughs> poem, if you will allow me. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure. Please. please. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, so uh, by closing remarks regarding this DPTP Act is that it, of course, is a landmark uh, actual legislation, right? Uh, some some organizations uh, look from the perspective 
that uh, it is it is uh, a compliance burden but but i look it as an uh, opportunity to build a uh, trust and reliability with my stakeholders as an organization if we see so uh, if we are having uh, the uh, if to, we have to adopt uh, uh, any organization they have to adopt the day to day business affairs update their websites privacy policies disclosures forms so it will all create uh, the positive impact on the stakeholders so that is a good side and uh, coming to <clears throat> uh, uh, after listening listening to medul uh, and uh, bala having the giving the so much of inputs uh, on this act right so i would like to say something kehte hai ki uske shaan mein dptp act ki shaan mein aur aap sab ki shaan mein kuch chand line hai jo main aapko suna raha hu theek hai although they are in english right so in realms of bites where shadows creep data whispers secrets to keep dptp act a guiding light will shield our information day and night encryption's cloak a shield so bright protects our right with coded might it's basically algorithm i am talking of from prying hands and eyes unseen i am talking of data breaches here this act stands a digital sheen confidentiality a cornerstone we claim ownership of data whispers our name with informed consent जो मृदुल ने बहुत अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन किया वी नेविगेट द टाइड इन द डिजिटल ओशियन वेयर प्राइवेसी मस्ट रिजाइड दैट्स ऑल थैंक यू दिस वाज देयर देयर कुड हैव बीन अ मोर ब्यूटीफुल वे टू क्लोज दिस सेशन बिकॉज़ यस इट्स अ लैंडमार्क लेजिस्लेशन वी ऑल आर हैप्पी टू सी दिस डे इन द कंट्री आज ही yeah it is like a you know a jewel added to the crown that is what <laughs> i have done actually at the end of the remarks <laughs> thanks a lot thanks a ton thank, thank, thank you so I much for we'll... thank you so much for inviting me here and thanks to meta and meta and you all for thank you i uh, think with you. this we close the session session comes to an end so next week we will yet meet in another session Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you. 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 Thank